Marks 20 years since the capture of a Pakistani Islamist militant who has been named the principal architect of the 9-11 World Trade Center attacks. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed has been in custody, mostly at Guantanamo Bay, since his capture as the U.S. built a case against him and others. Now, the Pentagon says pre-trial proceedings will begin in May 2026. Joining us now to discuss the case is Jamil Jaffer, former White House counsel to President George W. Bush, and now the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute at George Mason University's Law School. Jamil, thank you as always for joining us. Today is the 20th anniversary of Mohammed's capture in Pakistan. Why is it taking so long to bring this case to trial? Well, you know, uh, obviously Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was held um, in CIA custody for a number of years before he was transferred to Department of Defense custody. Um, and then ultimately charges weren't brought. The military commissions went back and forth between the Supreme Court, Congress and the like. It was reconstituted twice. Ultimately charges were brought in 2012. And then we've been in pretrial hearings uh, back and forth about what evidence might be used, what charges might be brought, what law applies. And at the end of the day, uh, just about a year ago, uh, the government started to enter into plea negotiations, the second round of plea negotiations with all the 9-11 defendants to see if they might be able to uh, put this, uh, these defendants away without the need for a trial in the military commissions. So when court proceedings do finally get underway, what are some of the possible scenarios uh, facing Mohammed if he is indeed found guilty? Well, obviously, uh, if he's convicted, he could be he could be sentenced to life in prison. Uh, the death penalty has been discussed about being on the table. Um, it's unclear whether the administration uh, could or would seek the death penalty. Uh, that's been the topic of some matter, some amount of discussion as well. And of course, the key question will be um, what evidence can come in, uh, particularly given that he was held in custody and, and subject to enhanced interrogation techniques. Can they bring in evidence uh, obtained later by an FBI clean team? So here's a question that's been discussed endlessly since September 11. Some groups say Muhammad is being denied his Sixth Amendment rights, but he's not an American citizen or on American soil. Is he, how could he be entitled to due process? Yeah, it's a great question, Lindsay. You know, one of the challenges here is that the Supreme Court has determined that the detainees at Guantanamo Bay have limited set of rights available to them, specifically the right to challenge their detention in federal court in what are called habeas proceedings. Uh, but they don't have the rest of the rights under US law, as you correctly point out, they're not American citizens. They're not physically here in the United States, although they are held under U.S. custody at Guantanamo Bay. And so there are some debates about whether the defendants should be brought here to the United States, detained here for some period of time, and maybe tried here, even in federal court. But the reason part of that hasn't happened is there are lots of questions about the safety and security of Americans and what would happen if these if these folks aren't convicted or if they're ultimately released from prison, um, you know, in, under while in the United States custody. So those are a lot of open questions and that's in part why they're still at, Gu at Guantanamo Bay. And Jamil, I want to get your thoughts on Guantanamo Bay itself, because you testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee in 2021 about Gitmo. The Biden administration wants to close this detention camp after former President Obama failed to do so. Why is it still around now? Well, you know, one of the challenges about Guantanamo Bay is that it is, uh, you know, the one place where we've held these detainees. There was an effort in the Obama administration to, one, close it, but also to bring the 9-11 defendants, uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and his colleagues, to New York to be tried in federal court. There was a huge uproar from uh, both sides of the aisle on Capitol Hill um, and members of the public in New York, the 9-11 families. Nobody wanted these defendants brought to New York, and as a result, uh, that effort failed. Um, and part of the thing here is that, you know, we don't know what kind of constitutional rights uh, the Supreme Court would afford these defendants if they were voluntarily brought into the United States on American soil and potentially brought before American federal courts. Those open questions have led to uh, the inability to bring these folks and the folks who will be detained through the course of this conflict, um, you know, to the United States. Hmm. All right, Jamil Jaffer, former associate White House counsel to President George Bush. Thank you so much for coming on this morning. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.